wonder what is the connection between sleep and weight loss. So I'm reading a really interesting um, study now because I love studies and I want to show you one graph. Uh, so the studies, if you go to PubMed, you can read, for example, about elevated ghrelin predicts, food intake, duration, experimental sleep restriction, right? So if you are science-based, you can read that. Otherwise, we will look at this graph. So uh, chronic sleep deprivation, what does it mean? Normally, you should sleep seven to nine hours every single night, and we have four stages. You can watch the masterclass, this workshop that I have on my website where I talk specifically about the four stages and what to do about it. But now in this short video, I want to share with you what happens if you are chronically deprived. So if you have only light sleep, you sleep maybe less than seven hours and you wake up tired and maybe Monday, Tuesday is still okay, but at the end of the week, you are totally exhausted. And of course you have sugar cravings and you are uh, just can't live without carbohydrates. So if you don't sleep well, it decreases insulin sensitivity. So what is insulin sensitivity? Basically, every cell in our body needs to open the gate so that insulin can come and bring the glucose, the sugar, the source of energy, anything that you eat into the cell. And only in the cell, in the mitochondria, it is turned into energy. So basically, when the uh, insulin sensitivity is, de is decreased, it means that the cells are on strike. They say, look, I'm really tired. I am not going to make any energy. And therefore you will be tired all day long. Yeah, so you don't sleep well. You think that you are going to eat and you gain the energy, but the cells mm, say no. What it also makes is chronic, chronic stress response. So we have different kinds of stress. We have a psychological stress, which is like emotional stress, the illusion that you create in your head with the fear and anxiety that you create on your own. So that's psychological stress. But then we also have chemical stress and that's what's happening in the body. So basically cortisol gets released. Adrenaline gets released because when you are tired, what do you do? You go for something caffeinated. So you have coffee or tea, which is going to spike the adrenaline. Adrenaline is a neurotransmitter. It comes very quickly. It's going to call cortisol, which is a steroid, slow stress hormone. And cortisol always increases uh, blood sugar levels. So it's, uh, it's causing inflammation, right? So we are basically in this trap. And also appetite, satiety, dysregulation, and neurocognitive disabilitation. So what does that mean? So basically, because your body is not creating the energy and your body is under the stress increasing the cortisol, uh, there is a feedback loop in the brain that says, look, we don't have any energy, make her to go to eat more of a sugary stuff. So you go and you crave bread, croissant, coffee, uh, tiramisu, whatever you crave, and you eat this. But because the hormones are totally out of balance, they're not going to signal back to the brain that you actually ate and you are having this um, um, appetite all the time and you never feel satisfied because the hormone leptin doesn't go up. You only have ghrelin that is a hunger hormone. And neurocognitive uh, disabilitation, it basically means uh, because you are under stress, when you are under stress, you cannot be happy. So the hormone serotonin, the happy hormone goes down. But when serotonin goes down, it cannot be turned in the night into melatonin, the sleep hormone. So you are in a vicious cycle. So you didn't have serotonin, don't have melatonin, don't sleep. And the next day is the same. So it shows you insulin is up. Insulin is anabolic hormone. It's a fat maker. Whenever you have insulin in your bloodstream, you cannot lose weight. Blood glucose levels goes up because you are running away from the tiger. Cortisol is there, right? So um, this is also going through the liver. So you might have fatty liver. Sympathetic uh, nervous system is uh, activated. Therefore, you cannot digest because the parasympathetic nervous system rest and digest is switched off. So you have a circulating cortisol. Cortisol 
it's pro-inflammatory, right? It's making in inflammation. So you will also have this pro-inflammatory cytokines in the body, which cause pain. So you might feel very sensitive to pain. Somebody will touch your muscles, so sore muscles, sore bones. The body is completely sore. Energy consumption. Yes, you are going to eat more because you want to com compensate and nutrient-dense food. Obviously, because the choice that you make is not broccoli, it's croissant. So as a result, decreased use of stored body fat for energy, obviously, because if you have high levels of insulin, which is a fat maker, is not going to allow you to take the storage from your belly fat, increased adipocyte storage, because all this sugar that you eat, liver doesn't know what to do with it, it's going to store it in your belly an excess energy balance because you eat more than your body weight. So what is the result of a bad sleep? It's weight gain. What can you do about it? I mean, would I be able to summarize it in one sentence? No. So the only thing that I tell you is to either join any of my online courses or schedule a free discovery call with me and we can maybe put a winning plan together if I think that we are a good match.